Welcome to our video tutorial on setting up a video wall using Nimble Streamer Transcoder. We published an article about it, and today we'll guide you through the process step by step. Our setup includes three live inputs and one video file. Let's get started. In our setup, we use MP4 files pushed by FFmpeg via popular streaming protocols to simulate live streams, featuring well-known test videos such as Big Buck Bunny and Tears of Steel, along with the Jellyfish file, which is in MKV format. Our last source is a mobile live stream from Larix Broadcaster. Notice that any of the live streaming protocols supported by Nimble Streamer can be used as a source for the transcoder. Once logged into WMS panel, it's important to ensure you're running the latest version of Nimble Streamer. Check for updates and verify that your transcoder license is active on the server info page. This feature works only on the recent versions of Nimble and Transcoder. Also, make sure you have the Nimble Transcoder License activated at the Settings Transcoder Licenses menu. Initially, we'll add a dedicated application that defines the output protocols and their settings. It's important to choose only the required protocols, as this will save RAM and enhance performance. In this demo, we'll use an application named Live and choose HLS and SLDP protocols, though you can use other protocols if you prefer. Click Save to apply the settings. Let's set up our inputs. Nimble Streamer supports various input protocols from widely accepted but old RTMP to cutting-edge SRT. We'll use RTMP and SRT in this demo. Port 1935 is defined for listening for RTMP in the Interfaces section. We will push the Big Buck Bunny video there. Now we add SRT inputs. Navigate to the MPEG TSIN section and select Add SRT Stream. Here, you can input the details for each live source, like IP and port to listen to. Here, we specify settings for receiving a live stream from Larix Broadcaster. We set latency to 2000 and name the output stream as Larix. Click Save and repeat the same setup steps for another port and stream name, which will receive tiers of steals. For more details, please refer to our documentation or dedicated videos. Okay, now we'll demonstrate how test live sources are made. We log into our demo server via SSH. Once connected, we navigate to a folder containing one-liner scripts that will push videos as RTMP and SRT live streams via FFmpeg. We run the scripts under the screen command so they can operate in separate consoles. After initiating the scripts, the Bunny and TOS streams appear on the WMS panel's live streams page. Next, we switch to Larix Broadcaster on mobile to start the streaming by pushing the big round button. Here, the Larix stream is successfully received by Nimble 2. The final source is an MKV file downloaded from the well-known Jellyfish bitrate test page. Notice that the file is stored locally on our demo server in the Overlays folder. We'll use its full path as an additional local file source to demonstrate how this type of source can be integrated. In the same folder, there's also a PNG file that will set our frame dimensions in the tutorial. We'll use these files shortly. For additional stability of the processing by transcoder, don't forget to add the following options in the Nimble config file. Next, let's create a scenario for our video wall. Go to the transcoders menu and click Create New Scenario. Click on a pencil icon at the top to name your scenario, add descriptions and tags, and also check Out of Process Mode Mark for allowing to run the scenario in a separate thread. In this mode, Nibble will continue to run even if something goes wrong with the scenario. To arrange the smaller videos within a frame, we must first establish their frame sizes. For this purpose, we utilize a 1080p resolution PNG image as our background. The other videos will be layered on top of this static image. Although this PNG displays color bars, they're merely for demonstration. It's important to remember that the dimensions of this PNG image will determine the output resolution of our stream. To add this background frame to your video pipeline, simply drag the video source into place, then click on the File option and enter the server's local path to the Overlays folder and the file name of the PNG background we discussed earlier. Set FPS to 30 for uniformity, as all the streams we have are 30 FPS. Next, we'll overlay the Big Buck Bunny. Drag the video source the same as before, but fill in the application and select a BBB stream. Important notice. Click on the Main Stream checkbox. It'll allow using timestamps of this stream for all other streams. 
Basically, the timestamps of any other video inputs of this scenario will be converted to timestamps of the stream marked as main. You'll notice a round target icon on the input marked as the main stream. Now, we add audio from the BBB stream. As you might have guessed, only one audio input can be properly synchronized with the one video due to the recalculation of timestamps. Make sure that the selected stream has the main stream option checked in its settings. We also add audio output for the sake of completeness. The crucial filter for superimposing videos is named Overlay. Put it on a video pipeline and link its first input. It's the background frame. Overlay filter must always have two inputs, or the scenario won't work and even won't be saved. Next, let's scale by half the BBB source video. Now put the scale filter, then specify the height of 540 pixels, which is half of 1080, and check the preserve aspect ratio. Link the output of the scale filter with the overlay filter input. Make sure that the main video is received from points to the source with the background PNG file. OK, now drag the video output block to specify the encoder settings. Name application as live and stream name as video wall. We use default settings, H.264 codec with ultrafast preset. Now link the audio we forgot to link. Click Save. As the sync is complete, you'll notice that the video wall stream is running and it has HLS and SLDP output as we defined previously for the live application. We choose the SLDP protocol to check the stream. Click play, and here we have a background with the BBB stream running on top of it. Sweet, but we'll add more. Switch to editing of our video wall scenario, drag another video source, and select file type of the source. Now enter a path where the Jellyfish MKV file is located. Enter 30 FPS and put the scale filter to reduce the resolution of the input. Sometimes, the transcoder will mark some other stream as main by itself, so make sure that the desired stream is properly marked. Now add a second overlay filter, link it with the sources, and specify a position of half of a screen by the x-axis. This will place Jellyfish next to the bunny video. Make sure the source for the main video is received from is set as in the previous overlay filter. Every next added overlay must have its main source set as the previous overlay filter. Remember this rule for the next setup steps. Video wall won't work without such a setup. Click Save, wait for the sync, and here, the Jellyfish file is running next to the bunny stream received by RTMP. If the file source is used, its timestamps are recalculated to match the main stream's timestamps by default. No additional steps are needed for syncing the file sources with main. Next, we'll add another live source that will have its PTS recalculated in sync with the main stream of this scenario. Add the live stream via video source decoder, the live TOS stream. Click Expert Setup and find the PTS Adjustment checkbox, then click it. Add the scale filter to make the videos fit their place in a frame. Then add the overlay filter and specify coordinates to place an overlaid video on a specific place within a frame. We can't use audio from this stream as we defined BBB as our mainstream for both video and audio. And the last live source we add is from Larix. We won't describe it in detail as the steps are the same as we described for the previous live video source. OK, now's the time to check our efforts. Choose the output stream for viewing on a video playback page. And here we have it, all four sources running within one video frame, forming a video wall or video mosaic. One thing to note, if one or several streams will be gone while the scenario is running, it won't fail. It'll hold the last frame received. However, all streams should be available at the moment the scenario is started. If they're missing, the scenario will fail to start until all the sources are available. To overcome this, use hot swap for the input streams. By the way, here's the RAM consumption for this scenario. It's stable for days and does not exceed more than 3 gigabytes for three 1080p 30fps live streams and one file. 
Thank you for following along with our tutorial. For more information and additional resources, be sure to visit our website and check out all the links in the description below.